Okay, in this video, I'm just going to go through how to print out your spreadsheet in formula view, showing all your formulas and functions used. So again, I'm doing summer 08 question paper 3, and I'm on question 14. Um, so it says, save the data model and print a copy of the sheet showing the formulae and functions used. Make sure that the contents of all cells are visible and that the printout is one page wide. Um, it may be three or four pages tall, so the length of it might be three or four pages, but the width should only be one page. Um, I've already set the orientation to landscape, um, and it's worth noting at this stage, if the question doesn't tell you to, um, what orientation to use and you're doing your formula printouts, I would recommend using landscape just because it's easier to fit everything on a single page. Um, I mentioned in a previous video that because I used a lookup function in one of my, uh, in this question paper, in one of the questions, but I've left my table array open. I've just minimized it, and that will help to reduce the amount of space that the function takes up. This dotted line here denotes um, the edges of a single page. Um, so that's the space that we have to work with, basically, to ensure that everything fits on a single page. We've been told that the the length of the page can be more than one. So we don't need to worry about the dotted line underneath uh, row 33. Just we need to make sure that everything fits only as far as this dotted line here, column L. So to show my formulas, I'm going to go to formulas and show formulas. And you'll see that now the view is changed. Now, the first thing that we need to know, and this is really, really important, is you need to adjust all your columns to ensure that all the data is visible. So I'll double click in between each um, letter, the uh, column reference, the letter. So between A and B, double click. And that opens up the column so that the whole function is visible. So important because if your if you leave your columns like this and half the function is closed cut off you're going to lose some marks the examiner can only give you marks for what he or she can see so you need to really make sure that you're going through and you're opening them up do not worry at this stage that our if function is now on a second page because we're going to do something to ensure that everything is on a single page just going to double check that my orientation is right it is right so we've got a lot of work to do because we have to make this fit on a single page wide so once i've done that i'll just hit the save and i'm going to go into print preview so i'll go to print and here we can see what our printout will look like obviously we've got some data on the other page which we need to sort out so how we would do that is we need to go into page setup and <clears throat> this window here will allow us to do a few things. So we could click on this button here that in the scaling section and go to fit to one page wide. Um, and if we click on that, we don't need it by a certain number at all, but we'll click on that and see what happens. So it's made it really, really tiny because it's tried to fit all the data onto a single page. But we don't actually need like the length on one page and you can see it's adjusted it down to 37 percent so i'm just going to increase the percentage um until i get it as i want it's still so the if is still on another page so i'll go in again and i'll decrease that down to maybe 55. okay that's on a single page by but it's still tiny um so i'm again i'm going to open this and i think i could increase a little bit yeah we're getting there let's increase it maybe to 70 percent yeah i think that's fine so now we can see all the functions and it's on a single page wide so we've got it's on two pages in length but the width is actually only on a single page i think we might be able to go up slightly more you want to make it as big as possible but obviously keeping within the the requirements of the examination board Maybe I'll try 76. Okay, that's too big. So we need to take it down, maybe to 74. Um, OK. 
okay maybe 73 it will have to do this might seem a bit tedious but at this stage when you're so close to your exams you need to really be thinking about all of this kind of stuff and ensuring that the examiner can see your functions clearly you don't want them to be tiny um, but you also want them to fit on the page so that's how you would ensure that that is correct um, and then you would print that out let's just check that we've met all the criteria of the question yeah they've not asked you to show the row and column headings in this particular question but they have asked that your details are printed in the header of the page so to do that we need to go into and we could do this in a couple of ways actually if we go to the page setup and go into header and footer we can then click on custom header or footer um, did they say at the top or bottom of the page it says in the header so it must be in the header so we need to go to custom header and then you can choose you need to read the question obviously um, but in your exam you're actually going to put in your candidate number you're going to put the center number And you're going to put your name as well. So I would use all three sections if I was you, um, just to make sure they're separated out. And then press OK. And so then that's they'll be in the header nicely spaced out and easy to see. So and they'll be at the top of every page, which is Cambridge requirements. Let's go back to the question and ensure we've done everything else. Um, it doesn't ask you to do uh, row and column headings or grid lines, but I will show you how to do those just in case your question does ask and you need to know. So if you go to sheet in page setup and then you have various options here. So grid lines you can add and row and column headings also. That's many, many students seem to miss out doing that for some reason. And then that obviously you need to reduce the size of your spreadsheet again because the row and column headings have now um, made that the used up some of the space and the grid lines as well so we then can go in and reduce that and hopefully everything will fit so that's only if the question asks for row and column headings and grid lines or one of the one of them that you need to do that if they don't ask for it and you do it you're not going to lose any marks but I mean don't waste your time unless you've been asked to do it but that's basically how you would print show in formula view, making sure the data is fully visible.